All praises, <clears throat> all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel who are out there following and practicing the law of liberty. And like I always say, if you don't know what the law of liberty is, just go to Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. And that's where you can find that. But anyway, today, um, <clears throat> I got a special reading for you today. One of my favorite prophets of all the prophets out of the Bible. I like them all, but this particular prophet is one of my favorite. It's the prophet Edris. And this particular lost book is called The Word and Revelation of Edris. Now, before we get into the reading, I want to speak a little bit about the prophet Edris. Edris, he came on the scene during our Babylonian captivity. Uh... We were in captivity to Babylon, and at that time, the ruler of Babylon was Autorexus. But he released our people, and this was because of Edris. Edris was a special prophet. He, let's just say this, he loved Israel. He loved his people. He was in constant intercession and prayer for the people of Israel. He fasted constantly so he can get revelations from the Most High. I mean, you know, by my... And if you haven't, let me just say this. If you haven't already, I suggest that you read First and Second Edris. They're part of the Apocrypha. They're two powerful books. I consider them required reading for all of, it, all of Israel. You know, if you're really into this word, man. I, if you haven't already, I would suggest that you read those two books you'll get a lot of insight and a lot of revelations uh, about what's going to happen to us and about end time, about what we're going through right now. But anyway, getting back to uh, the prophet Edris, he, um, like I said, he loved Israel and he was in constant intercessory in prayer. I mean, he fasted constantly. And just by the readings, by me reading about him and about the book of Edris in the first and second book of Edris, Man, it seemed like the man barely ate or drank water. I mean, he was always fasting, but by doing this, he became real close with the Most High. The Most High loved Edris. He loved him so much that he gave him foresight and hindsight. Edris saw everything that was going to happen to us as a people. He saw all of the captivities, the slave trade. Us getting scattered across the world, us being beat, raped, pillaged, everything being taken away from us, us being beat down to the bottom of the barrel, you know, everything, you know, our women being raped, kids being killed, you know, us being ran from to and fro, you know, us not literally having anything. He saw all of that. He saw all the atrocity that was going to befall us. And he saw the beginning all the way to Adam. The garden, you know, uh, Enoch, you know, uh, Abraham, everything. He, he, he saw it all. So this was a heavy burden. But he knew also Yahweh. And, you know, Yahweh believes in his law and judgment. So when you break his law or you turn yourself away from him and you start chasing after other gods, which we did regularly, getting caught up with the people, you know, that we were mingling with and got our minds off of him. I mean, shoot, he turned us over to him. He said, if y'all love them more than me, because you got to understand the Most High is a jealous God. So if you love you, you loving these people more than me, I'm going to turn you over to them. And, you know, these people were harsh to us. They knew that we was the people of the power of the book of, of God. So they treated us harshly. So we was in constant constant captivity. I think we really only had 40 years of peace. That, that was under Solomon. So we as a people, man, we've always been in constant, just constant uh, captivity and just constantly being beat down. But anyway, Edris had a heart for Israel. Even so much that one time the Most High asked him, man, do you love these people more than you love me? 
Because, man, every time you turn around, you coming to me about these people. You know, and I told you <clears throat> that if they disobey me, they're going to be punished straight up. You know, the most high, man, he, he's the king of terrors, man. He don't play. He's a legalist, man. So if you break his commandments or you don't do his word, man, you, you know, you're you going to get punished, you know, to death. Because he believe in capital punishment. There ain't no problem with him. He got a right hand and he got a left hand and he don't play. So Edris knew this. So he was trying his best to be in constant intercession for the Most High because he knew the Most High had it out for us because we was a wicked people, man. We was wicked. You know, stiff neck. You know, you know, just like we are today. Shoot, to be most honest, be honest with you. But anyway, but Edris prayed. Pray constantly, constantly to the Most High about us, about his people, man. So anyway, he was um, he was of the tribe of Levi. You could trace his lineage all the way back to Eliezer, who was the son of Aaron. Uh, so he he's a Levite, and like I said, he's he's one of the great prophets, man. So you know you really need to get to know Edris, man. You know read First and Second Edris in the Apocrypha if you haven't read it already. Um, they're good, man. So anyway, um, I think that's enough of a introduction to Edris. I can go on and on about him because like I said, he's one of my favorite prophets, but we're going to get into this book. Um, <clears throat> it's called the word and revelation of Edris, the holy prophet and the beloved of power, the beloved of God. So, um, Let's just get into it. <clears throat> it came to pass in a 13th year, on the 22nd of the month, I was in my house and I cried out and said to the Most High, Lord, give me the glory in order that I may see thy mysteries. And when it was night, there came an angel, Michael, the archangel, archangel. And says to me, O prophet Edris, <clears throat> refrain from bread for 70 weeks. <laughs> See, there you go again with that fasting. And I fasted as he told me. And there came Raphael, the commander of the host. And he gave me a sorax, S-T-O-R-A-X, a sorax rod. And I fasted twice a week for 60 weeks. And I saw the mysteries of the power in his angels. And I said to them, I wish to plead before the power about the race of the Christians. <clears throat> now, this particular writing says Christians, but you could just say Israel, you know, because <clears throat> he's talking about end time again. And, I, and what do we call right now? Christians. You know, most of uh, Christians today, they don't even know they're Israel. You know, they think they're Christians, which is just a religion. It's not a nationality. But anyway, it is good. <clears throat> it is good for a man not to be. It is good for a man not to be born rather than to come into the world. I was therefore taken up into heaven and I saw in the first heaven a great army of angels and they took me to the judgments and I heard. A voice saying to me, have mercy on us, O thy chosen of power, Edris. Then began I to say, woe to sinners when they see one who is just more than the angels. And they themselves are in Guyana of fire. And Edris said, have mercy on the works of thy hand. Thou who art compassionate and of great mercy, judge me rather than the souls of the sinners. See, he's already talking about, you know, hey, judge me, man. Don't judge these sinners, you know. There you go. There you go with having a heart for the people. But it is better that one soul should be punished and that the whole world should not come into destruction. And power said, 
I will give rest in paradise to the righteous, and I have before been merciful. And Edra said, Lord, why dost thou confer benefits on the righteous? For just as one who has been hired out and has served out his time, goes and again works as a slave when he comes to his master, so also the righteous have received his reward in heaven. But have mercy on the sinners. See, there you go. For we know that thou art merciful. And power said, I do not see how I can have mercy upon them. And Edra said, they cannot endure thy wrath. And power said, this is the fate of such. And power said, I wish to have thee like Paul and John, as thou hast given me uncorrupted the treasure that cannot be stolen, the treasure of virginity, the bulwark of men. And Edra said, it is good for a man not to be born. It is good not to be in life. The irrational creatures are better than a man because they have no punishment, but thou hast taken us and given us up to judgment. Woe to the sinners in the world to come, because their judgment is endless and the flame unquenchable. And while I was thus speaking to him, there came Michael and Gabriel and all the apostles, and they said, Rejoice, O faithful man of God. And Edra said, Arise and come hither with me, O Lord, to judgment. And the Lord said, Behold, I give thee my covenant between me and thee, that ye may receive it. And Edra said, Let us plea in thy hearing. And power said, Ask Abraham, your father, how a son pleads with his father, and come plead with us. And Edra said, As the Lord liveth, I will not cease pleading with thee in behalf of the race of the Israelites. Where are thy ancient compassion? He's saying, where's your compassion there, man? <laughs> o Lord, why is thy long suffering? Where is thy long suffering? And God said, as I have made night and day, I have made the righteous in the sinner, and he should have lived like the righteous. In other words, you should have been doing right. Shoot. Now I'm getting ready to, you know what, put it to you. And the prophet said, who made Adam the first form? And power said, my undefiled hands. And I put him in paradise to guard the food of the tree of life. And therefore he became disobedient and did this in transgression. And the prophet said, was he not protected by an angel? And was not his life guarded? by the cherubim to endless ages? And how was he deceived who was guarded by angels? But thou didst command all to be present and to attend to what was said to be the tree. But if thou hadst not given him Eve, the serpent would not have deceived her, but whom thou wilt, thou savest, and whom thou wilt, thou wilt destroy. And the prophet said, let us come, my Lord, to a second judgment. And God said, I cast fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> and the prophet said, Lord, thou dealest with us according to our, to our deserts. And the power said, see, Ezra is going back and forth with it, man. He going back and forth with the most high. <laughs> most high said, man, this bad won't quit. See, I, he said, I ain't got nothing for the sinner, man. Most high ain't trying to hear all that. Your sins transcend my clemency. In other words, I gave you clemency. I keep giving you guys a way out, but y'all keep on sinning. Shoot. And the prophet said, call to, my, call to mind the scriptures, my father, who has measured out Jerusalem and set her up again. Have mercy, O Lord, upon the sinners. Have mercy upon thy own creatures. Have pity upon thy works. Then power remembered those whom he had made and said to the prophet, How can I have mercy upon them? Vinegar and gall did they give me to drink. He's talking about Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son. I am in the Father as the Father. I am in the Father as the Father is in me. 
And not even then did they repent. And the prophet said, Reveal thy cherubim, and let us go together to judgment. And show me the day of judgment, what like it is. And power said, Thou hast been deceived, Edris, for such is the day of judgment, as that is which there is no rain upon the earth. But it is a merciful tribunal as compared with that day. In other words, it's much worse than that. And the prophet said, I will not cease to be pleading with thee unless I see the day of the consummation. In other words, man, I ain't going to stop. I ain't going to stop begging and praying to you until you show me the end. And power said, number the stars in the sand of the sea. And if thou should be able to number this, thou art able to plead with me. In other words, if you can do that, then I'll keep letting you plead with me. And the prophet said, Lord, thou knowest that I will wear human flesh. And how can I count the stars of heaven in the sand of the sea? And the power said, my chosen prophet, no man will know that great day in the appearing that comes to judge the world. For thy sake, my prophet, I have told thee the day, but the hour have I not told thee. And the prophet said, Lord, tell me also the years. And the power said, if I see the righteous of the world, that it has abound, I will have patience with them. But if not, I will stretch forth my hand and lay hold of the world by the four quarters and bring them all into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will wipe out the race of men <laughs> so that the world should be no more. And the prophet said, And how can thy right hand be glorified? And the power said, I shall be glorified by my angels. In other words, I don't even need y'all anymore. And the prophet said, Lord, if thou hast resolved to do this, why didst thou make man in the beginning? Thou didst say to our father Abraham, Multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sand that is by the seashore. And where is this? Thy promise. And power said, First will I make an earthquake for the fall of the four footed beast and of men. And when you see that brother gives up brother to death, and that children should rise up against their parents, and that a woman forsakes her own husband, and when a nation shall rise up against a nation in war, then will you know. That the end is near. And that is happening right now. For then. Neither brother pities brother. Yep. Nor man wife. Nor children parents. Nor friends friends. Nor slave is master. For he who is the adversary of man. Should come up from Tartarus. And should show men many things. What shall I make of thee. Edris? And wilt thou yet plead with me. <clears throat> And the prophet said, Lord, I should not cease to plead with thee. And power said, number the flowers on earth. If thou should be able to number them, thou art able also to plead with me. And the prophet said, Lord, I cannot number them. I wear human flesh, but I should not cease to plead with thee. Edris, man, he just won't give up. I wish, Lord, to see also under the parts of Tartarus. And power said, Come down and see. And he gave me Michael and Gabriel and other 34 angels. And I went down 85 steps. And they brought me down 500 steps. And I saw a fiery throne and an old man sitting upon it. And his judgment was merciless. And I said to the angels, Who is this? And what is his sin? And they said to me, this is Herod, who for a time was a king in order to put to death the children from two years old and under. And I said, woe to his soul. And again, they took me down 30 steps and I there saw boilings of fire. And in them, there were a multitude of sinners. And I heard their voices, but saw not, but saw not their forms. And they took me down. Lord, many steps, which I could not measure. And I there saw old men 
and fiery pivots turning in their ears. And I said, Who are these? And what is their sin? And they said to me, These are they who would not listen. Mm. And they took me up, and they took me down again, another 500 steps. And I there saw the worm that sleeps not, and fire burning upon the sinners. And they took me down to the lowest part of destruction, and I saw there the twelve plagues of the abyss. <clears throat> Looking at my time. And they took me away to the south, and I saw there a man hanging by his eyelids. Ah! And the angels kept scourging him. And I asked, Who is this? And what is his sin? And Michael the commander said to me, This is one who lays with his mother. Mm -mm -mm. For having put into practice a small wish, he has been ordered to be, to be hanged. And they took me away to the north. And I saw there a man bound with iron chains. And I asked, Who is this? And he said to me, This is he who said, I am the son of the power that made stones bread and water wine. And the prophet said, My Lord, let me know what is his form, and I should tell the race of men that they may not believe in him. Edris wanted to warn us. And he said to me, The form of his countenance is like that of a wild beast, his right eye like the star that rises in the morning, and the other without motion. His mouth is one cubit, his teeth span long, his fingers like sitits, sitits, S-C-Y-T-H-E-S. The track of his feet of two spans, and his face an inscription, Antichrist. He has been exalted to heaven, he should go down to Hades. At one time he should become a child, at another an old man. And the prophet said, Lord, and how dost thou permit him? And he deceives the race of men. And power said, Listen, my prophet, he becomes both child and old man, and no one believes him that he is my beloved son. And after this, a trumpet, and the tomb shall be opened, and the dead shall rise incorruptible. Then the adversary, hearing the dreadful threatening, should be hidden and out of darkness. Then the heaven and the earth and the sea shall be destroyed. Then shall I burn the heavens eighty cubits, and the earth eight hundred cubits. And the prophet said, And how has the heaven sinned? And God said, Since there is evil, and the prophet said, Lord, in the earth, how has it sinned? And power said, since the adversary, having heard the dreadful threatening, shall be hidden, even on account of this will I melt the earth, and with it the opponents of the race of men. And the prophet said, have mercy, Lord, upon the race of the, of the Israelites. And I saw a woman hanging, and four wild beasts sucking her breast. And the angel said to me, she grudged to give her milk, but even threw her infants into the rivers. And I saw a dreadful darkness in a night that had no stars nor moon, nor is there young or old, nor brother with brother, nor mother with child, nor wife with husband. And I wept and said, O Lord power, have mercy upon the sinners. And as I said this, there came a cloud and snatched me up and carried me away again into the heavens. And I saw there many judgments, and I wept bitterly. And I said, It is good for a man not to have come out of his mother's womb. And those who were in torment cried out, saying, Since thou, since thou hast come hither, O Holy One of power, we have found a little remission. And the prophet said, Blessed are they that weep for their sins. And power said, Hear, O beloved Edris, as a husbandman cast the seed of the corn into the ground, so also the man cast his seed into the parts of a woman. 
The first month, it is all together. The second, it increases in size. The third, it gets hair. The fourth, it gets nail. The fifth, it turns into milk. And the sixth, it is made ready and receives life. The seventh, it is completely furnished. The ninth, the bearers of the gate of the woman are open. And it is born safe and sound into the earth. And the prophet said, Lord, it is good for a man not to have been born. Woe to the human race then, when thou shalt come to judgment. And I said to the Lord, Lord, why hast thou created man and delivered him up for judgment? And power said, with a lofty proclamation, I will not by any means have mercy on those who transgress my covenant. And the prophet said, Lord, where is thy goodness? And power said, I have prepared all things for men's sake, and men does not keep my commandments. And the prophet said, Lord, reveal me the judgments in paradise. So I'm going to stop right there. That's the first part. So I hope this reading was a blessing to you. And like I always say, you know, listen to this video a couple of times and meditate on it. And stay tuned for part two. And may Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, shall bless you.